Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so exciting, so exciting. If you follow me on Instagram, I feel like you'd either be super pumped about this because I've been talking about my teeth for just under a year now. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I hope you find this video really, really useful. If you stumbled upon this because you're thinking about going through a little teeth journey, then welcome, hello, my name is Uche. I'm gonna be telling you today all about my Invisalign journey, my teeth journey in general. Before we get into the video, first of all, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. If you love my makeup, you should definitely hit the subscribe button. If you don't, I'm hoping my bubbly personality wins you over by the end of this video and then you'll hit the subscribe button anyway. If you are not new, thank you so much for joining me on another video. I hope you guys are pumped, excited, have your notebooks. This video is about to be, I hope, super informative and also concise. Two things I tend to struggle with because I tend to ramble and I tend to forget things. I'm splitting this video into three parts, what I did, how I arrived there and then I'm going to do you guys' questions so I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram and also Twitter which hopefully will fill in any gaps that I miss out so Invisalign for you guys who don't know is basically a alternative to traditional train track braces so instead of getting the wires either on the front or the back I decided to get Invisalign which is basically like these plastic trays and they fit in the top and the bottom if you don't know you can't just get one row so you couldn't just get a bottom tray to fix defects on your bottom tooth you'd have to get top and the bottom because as one set moves the other naturally has to move to accommodate the new arrangement of your teeth my teeth weren't bad I just had an overbite that I was con I felt my overbite elongated my face once my Invisalign was done I decided to whiten my teeth because I was going to get cosmetic bonding so the reason you whiten your teeth before cosmetic bonding is because you cannot whiten bonding so bonding again for you guys that don't know it's essentially like a resin or an acrylic material and it's used to level out your teeth. I only have bonding on the top six of my teeth. The reason I decided to get just the top six is because it's what you see when I smile. Like when I'm talking, you don't really see my bottom row too much. You kind of only see my top row and of the top row, you only really see the top six. Bonding not only evens out your teeth, but it also kind of brightens them a little bit, whitening on my top and my bottom. But after my bonding, I noticed that my top row were actually whiter. So in order to do the bonding, I had to do the whitening first because your teeth have to get to a certain whiteness or well, the whiteness you would like before they put the bonding on because you can't can't whiten the acrylic or the resin material that's used to bond the teeth. It's really up to you however white you want to get them. I really wanted to go the whole mile and get them super super extra but while I was whitening my teeth I was also away so I wasn't very disciplined with whitening my teeth so I only got them up like two or three whitenesses brighter than what I originally started with. I think I started with like C1 and I got them up to like B B1. So the brightest you can get is A1, obviously, which is like a Hollywood blind and smile. I actually went through three courses of Invisalign. So I had my initial course. I was supposed to be done in like half a year and I ended up having them for a whole year. So I got my initial course done, which was six months. After the six months, I wasn't really happy with the angle of my overbite. The whole idea of getting Invisalign was to fix my overbite. If you guys remember pre-Invisalign, I also had a gap. I absolutely love my gap. It's um, genetic, my dad has it, my brother has it he had it and then had braces to close it and then has it back again and actually my dentist Rona said did you want to shave it back in at the end but my mum was like that's absolutely ridiculous you're not going to shave your gut back in once you've closed it after my second round of Invisalign I got my bonding done there was a period of time where I wasn't wearing my top retainer that was it I wasn't wearing my top retainer after because they didn't fit after I got the bonding done remember I only got them done on the top teeth so in that time they kind of moved one thing guys, teeth move quick and your tongue can always pick up where your teeth has moved because obviously your tongue, by nature of where it is, it's gonna pick up any slight movement. And I said to Rona, I was like, I, I need to go again. I was like, I'm not, I'm still not fully happy with the angle of my teeth. Can't always bring back the top row. It, it depends on your, the structure of your jaw for how far you can bring them back. And another thing is Invisalign is not as strong as traditional train track train track so there's only so much your teeth can move with Invisalign before you have to go for something stronger but obviously because of the cosmetic side of it people do prefer Invisalign because it's supposedly invisible but you can still see it and one thing I really like about 
the process is you can ride the wheels right off it until you're happy like you don't have to pay extra for wanting to extend it so for me I just felt like I'd rather do the whole process extend it for as many times as I need to and I'm happy with rather than do it and then a year from now and be like actually and have to start the whole process all over again and have to pay a whole load I was like let me just ride the wheels off it let me just see how far I can bring this in and until I'm happy with it so I did my third round. While doing my third round, I'd already got the bonding. So the third round of Invisalign was over top of my bonding. And I think actually I needed that. I needed it to be over my bonding to see how my teeth would look in the final, final stage with the bonding with the Invisalign. Basically the way my gums were, this tooth, the gum was higher than this one. So when I smiled, you could still see the gum on this side of, on this, on this big tooth. I'll insert a picture so you guys can see what I mean. So Ronan was like, I think it'd be a good idea to laser your gums, just to make sure they're all even, so when you smile, you know, everything's the same, and also it would give you more of a toothy smile. Some people naturally have gums that are in line, my gums were not in line. Oh, also, today's my first day fully having them off, by the way. I got my fixed wires. Fixed wires are essentially wires put on the back of my top and my bottom row and they hold the teeth in place. Someone also said that their dentist didn't even give them that option, but you can get fixed wires. And what you absolutely need to get is the nighttime retainers. That's non-negotiable, but I also got the fixed wires for extra, you know what I mean? Like if you spend that much money, you want your teeth to be like, chef's kiss and this line hurts okay it hurts and that's something that people don't talk about traditional braces hurt a lot and i remember my brother complaining about how much his braces hurt and i was just like yeah whatever or like my friends when they got their braces tightened they would always talk about how much it hurts and i'd be like yeah okay whatever we get it, it hurts these don't hurt as much as traditional but they hurt your teeth are literally being forced to move my first ever try of invisalign i was popping paracetamol like candy for like four days when you put a new tray in it moves your teeth and up until the point where your teeth settle into the new trays and then it doesn't hurt anymore but that process happens every time you change your trays sometimes it was chill sometimes it really hurt i see small really helped with the pain also like your gums are really tender so just think having to pop out the trays to eat your gums already hurt your teeth already hurt and then you're popping them out on top of that the friction between the plastic and your gums the plastic and your teeth you're getting like mouth ulcers toothaches it it's painful, like I'm not gonna lie. I looked into Invisalign when I was like 16, 17, but the orthodontist told me that I would basically grow into my teeth. I had adult teeth at an earlier stage of life, obviously did not grow into them. <laughs> so I know someone that went to Rona to do composite bonding, and I was like, I really love like the way her composite bonding looks. You only have to pay 50 pounds for a consultation, which of course is redeemable against any treatments that you get. And at the time, that was when she started getting busy so now she's ridiculously busy at that time she was still busy but not as busy as she is now and I remember like the nearest appointment was like two months from when I was calling I put the deposit down worst thing is I lose my deposit but I knew that I really wanted to get Invisalign it got to a point there where I'd looked into it before so when I went for my appointment in August I had already decided in my head that I'm doing this 100% so that's when Rona talked through the different options with me so even if I went in and said hey I want train tracks they are by law supposed to tell you all of your options so once you decide what you want. I can only speak on Invisalign, I don't know the process for the others. They take some sort of large sum of money because they need that to basically create the impressions and the impressions show you how your teeth will change. So it's a 3D impression and it shows you how your teeth are now and then how they change by the week and how they'll look at the end. And they do that before every Invisalign process. So every time I extended my Invisalign, we would see how it's gonna change. If you're not happy with the end result, then there's no point creating the trays because they are so specific to every single individual. They will need to redo the whole thing, top to bottom, and just cut the trays. So they cut the trays all at once and your dentist will either drip feed you the trays or they'll give it to you all at once. Rona drip fed me the trays because the first two trays you wear for two weeks and then after that you can change them every seven days. So she would give me the trays the first two trays make me come back in, check how they were going, file between my teeth if I need, if they needed to. Filing is a very mild procedure, by the way. Rona's very particular, so she would be like, oh, can you come back in four weeks so I can just make sure that all the teeth are moving how they should be moving. You also get attachments, which is essentially these little bumps that they attach to your teeth. They just guide the way your teeth move and just make sure that the teeth are moving how they should be. As I said, Invisalign isn't the strongest method of moving your teeth, so the bumps add extra resistance just to give them a bit more of a pulling force. I would recommend getting bumps. Um, some people DM me during the process and were like, I don't really want to get them. And I'm like, you might as well get them because 
they really help move your teeth. The Invisalign itself comes from a central system. Invisalign is who dictates like how much they charge and you know how many trays you'll need and how long you have to wear them for and so on and so forth. What your dentist really specializes in is like if your dentist was a specialist in veneers or your dentist was a specialist in cosmetic bonding, that kind of stuff is what kind of differs uh, dentist to dentist. That's where you'd probably have to do a little bit more research to figure out who was the right orthodontist for you. Invisalign itself isn't the technicality because that is so precise and I think it'd be difficult to go wrong with that one based on administration like based on okay that dentist got it wrong because they administered it wrong I don't think that's I haven't seen that that happened but where the margin of error comes into place is definitely stuff you get extra so who does your gum lasering or who does your composite bonding or if you wanted I know someone that got Invisalign and then got veneers so who did her veneers after that kind of stuff you guys can correct me by the way I'm not saying that was gospel that's just what I think okay let's do these questions did you have to get any teeth removed before starting no <laughs> I didn't get any teeth removed but if you have overcrowding in your mouth which basically means that you have too many teeth then you might have to get some teeth removed i'm still debating but do you wish you got it sooner or was it the right time it was just the right time for me i'm not a uni i work full time you have to think about the fact that you have to take the trays out every time you need to eat so you have to take the trays out every time you need to eat you cannot eat with the invisalign trays in and then you have to floss or like brush your teeth or maybe do a mouthwash something to remove any excess the food from inside your mouth before putting the trays back on also like accessibility you need to be able to go to your dentist let's say you're at uni and your dentist is at home like going up and down back and forth or your dentist is at uni and then you're at home and you need to go to your dentist to grab something when my friend had hers she picked a dentist that was open over the weekend because she just did not have time to go to the dentist during the week so just things like that why did you decide to change your teeth as i said for me it was more of an overbite issue i did have a gap that got closed which is unfortunate but i just really wanted to change that angle of my overbite. <laughs> How long did it take you and what other treatments did you do? It took me about a year. The initial course was six months but then I ended up extending twice. Also as I mentioned my dentist is really busy so trying to get an appointment elongated the process a little bit because I'd have to wait longer than usual to like get my new trays because it was a case of trying to fit me in when my dentist was available not necessarily when things were ready to be done. That's also another thing to keep in mind. Oh this is a big question. How much did it cost? So Invisalign I paid about four grand for and that includes when you at one point you have to pay 800 pounds for them to take the impressions at one point you have to pay to actually say okay yes I'm going to do Invisalign and that kind of acts as your solid deposit non-refundable deposit and then you pay the 800 I think it's 300 to say you're doing it 800 pounds for them to make the impressions for you to see how your teeth will change and then after that they divide, they divide what's left over by the amount of months that you're going to be doing it so I finished paying off Invisalign so early because of course I kept extending it I did the home whitening kit you could also do the in dental whitening kit but it's way more expensive the home one I bought two sets of whitening kits the first one I bought was the daytime one which obviously I did the first round which was 69.99 I believe and then I got the nighttime ones because I want to actually whiten my bottom teeth again. Two lots of $69.99. Gum lasing was just something that she was like, should we do it? And then we just decided to do it. Overnight trays, they are just over £300. I believe they're like £350, £375. I cannot remember. Bonding. So Rona charges like £300. £200, £300 per tooth. I believe that's the average price. She gave me kindly, very, very kindly gave me 50% off my bond in so instead of paying like however much 250 times 60 teeth is or 300 times 60 teeth is I paid half that amount gum lazing was free fix retainers was free overnight trays were I think 375 you guys can do the math I might just leave it in the description box below very expensive with Invisalign I ended up paying just under 400 pounds a month after they divided it all up if I knew I could have done it for longer I probably wouldn't have extended it any longer just under 400 pounds was manageable for me and sometimes I'd go in and have to pay like three months worth because I hadn't been in I think in total it's just like just I don't want to embarrass myself here with bad maths, but it's between five to six K, depending on where you go, depending on what you want, depending on if you want to whiten your teeth, if you want bonding, if you want your gum lasered, you know, how many teeth you want to get bonded, so on and so forth, if you want your top and your bottom. I only got the top because my top cover my bottom 
so that's why I didn't bother even getting those. Can this method be used for someone with a lot of gaps in their teeth? One of my friends is actually in the process of doing Invisalign now and a few of the dentists or one or two of the dentists she went to said that she'd have to get braces but she went to Rona and Rona was like it's cool we can do it on Invisalign so I think it does depend on what dentist you go to. My friend did not want to get train tracks she was like I want to get Invisalign <laughs> like that is what I want and that's what I'm going to get but it just depends how severe your teeth are are. Do you think since using Invisalign it has changed the shape of your face and mouth? It for sure has slimmed down my face 100%. Why did you go for Invisalign and not braces? I already had Invisalign in my head from when I was 17 so I knew Invisalign, Invisalign. I didn't even consider any other options. What is the purpose of gum lasering? One side of my gums was slightly higher than the other side so gum lasering essentially leveled out my gums and also gave me a bit more of a toothy smile so when I smile you see more tooth and less gum. How did you discipline yourself to always have your Invisalign on at all times. They weren't really like a huge inconvenience to me. When I first started them, I was so, so disciplined. Towards the end, I would be so bad. I'd pop them out before going out and then pop them back in at night, which is obviously several hours of not wearing them, but that was literally towards the tail end. My teeth would already move the majority. If you think about how much money you're paying for them, it'd be really silly for you not to be disciplined. And it's only a few months or a year and some change or two years of your life that you have to wear this, which in the grand scheme of life is not that long. As annoying as they can be sometimes, it's better to have them in and have your teeth move than to have to keep extending the process because you're being sloppy and lazy with having them in. Oh, this is a good question. Did you have to take your smiley piercing out? My mum was like, you're definitely gonna have to take that out. That was one of the first questions I asked Rona and I didn't, I had, the, well, I had my smiley piercing in the whole time and it's still there. So if you guys don't know, that's my smiley. Does the bonding feel like a fill-in? No, it's literally just like a composite material that's put over the top. I can't even really feel my bonding because it's on my front teeth and my front teeth sit in front of my bottom. So I can't really feel them. What I can feel is like the material behind where my fixed retainers are. Disadvantages, good question. If you're quite fussy about pain, as I said, it's a painful process. But in general, moving your teeth is going to be painful. <laughs> the mouth ulcer is not fun. Having to pop them out, obviously, it's not ideal. Especially if you're like, pop every time you pop them out, you get like a gallon of saliva that surrounds them. Quite disgusting. I would literally pop to the toilet all the time. Like, sorry, I'm just gonna go to the toilet, pop them out and be back in two seconds. People looking at me like, what on earth do you go to the toilet to do? As I said, they're not as strong as traditional braces. So you might have to, when I spoke to like my dentist, I was like, oh my God, I feel like really annoying having to extend it. And they were like, don't worry, like a lot of people do more than one round so because they're not as strong you might have to do a couple of rounds which it might extend for longer heaps of people i've met randomly it's a really good way to bond and meet people by the way like i remember being in bangkok and these random guys came to talk to us and i was like oh my god you're wearing invisalign he was like yeah like but i'm having to wear these for a lot longer because blah blah blah, blah. so it's a good way to bond with people like you notice when people have invisalign you're like oh my god you're wearing, tra you're wearing your trains you're wearing your trains they are absolutely 110 percent without a shadow of a diet 15 out of 20 would recommend to a friend all the time like, i think they're the best things i've done all year like top five best things i've done in my life i'm so happy with them yeah lots of questions about how much they hurt they hurt me the whole way through like every time i changed my trays it was not necessarily painful but you do experience discomfort when i first got the trays in those little suckers hurt a lot like a lot a lot and periods of time where i have to wait to get like my next set of trays. When I put the next set in, it was like really tight and uncomfortable. Oh, that's a good question. How long does the composite bonding last? Composite bonding only lasts like two to three years, I think. So keep that in mind that they're not forever. So we'll have to get them redone at some point. Did I lose weight with it? No, a lot of people, that's a good question. A lot of people lose weight because having to pop the retainers out to eat <laughs> can be really, really annoying. But honestly, I was like, oh, I, I don't think I'm gonna be popping them out to snack. This will definitely stop me from snacking. That lasted like a week. After that, I was back to my regular eating habits. Like it didn't really hinder. I literally would pop them out to have a biscuit and pop them back in again. Like I'd pop them out, have a biscuit, wash my mouth with some mouthwash, pop them back in again and keep pushing. Like I really thought it would make me more disciplined, but it did not. <laughs> Is bonding worth it? I think bonding's absolutely worth it. I love the, for me, I feel like if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it properly. I love the look of bonding. When I finished my Invisalign, I was like, I'm so glad I'm doing bonding because it really does complete the whole process. Like look Ding. <laughs> how soon did you see results oh so she's on a line of five out of 26 because mine was an overbite thing i think they have to bring the overbite in first before they start moving the rest of the teeth so i saw results not pretty quickly but 
I wasn't really like, oh my God, wait and wait and wait. And I was just kind of like looking at them like, oh, okay. But heaps of my friends saw results so quick. The rate at which your teeth change is mad, especially when you start changing your trays every week. Like you blink and you're basically at the end. It's so crazy. Right, I'm moving on to Twitter questions. My battery is like flashing at me saying round up. So yeah, let's just do these quickly. People asking, composite bonding is not veneer. With veneers, you have to shave down your teeth for them to insert the veneers. With composite bonding, it's literally just semi-permanent material that's put over your natural teeth just to level them out. And then, and just like veneers, they don't last forever. With veneers, I think you have to change them every 10 years. With composite bonding, you have to change them every two to three years. So they are not the same, they are different. Oh, loads of people asking where I got mine done. My dentist is Dr. Rona at Chelsea Dental Clinic. And I also had a few appointments with Sarah as well. She's the one who put my fixed retainers in and she also did like my last set of Invisalign. So she did that whole process with me. Sarah was really good actually, because she was like, they're both good but Sarah was like okay what is the actual problem she was like is it the angle is it this I was like it's the angle I want them to be straight da, da, da. so we really really got to the end like to the root I will leave my dentist details in the description bar below highly recommend love Rona love Sarah love everyone at Chelsea Dental Clinic they're all so lovely and I'm really big on like good customer service and they are such such a lovely team of people honestly people asking if the procedure is expensive for me it's very expensive like upwards of six grand for your teeth is a lot of money but i'm also so into oral hygiene and like teeth are the first thing i notice on other people so for me it's like been such a good investment that like, i'm so happy i wouldn't have it any other way i'm so glad i did them like da ding ding <laughs> So sorry guys, my battery died, so I had to go charge that real quick. Let's resume. Can you pay monthly? I would be surprised if your dentist didn't offer a monthly payment plan just because it's a lot of money to pay up front. Lots of questions about like maintenance. This is the device I like to use to floss. I know some people use the string, but because of the fixed retainers, obviously you can't just push it in. So Sarah recommended like this this special floss, which basically goes thin fluffier and then kind of levels out where you feed it in between the gaps in your teeth to floss i feel like that is going to be that's going to be a lot for me that's the only maintenance that i feel like will be quite tough for me other than that when the trays at night won't be a big deal i obviously have the fixed retainers which should really really help sensitivity so when you whiten your teeth that's another question about sensitivity whitening your teeth increases the sensitivity i use the sensodyne rapid relief that really really helps i have sensitive teeth in general but using that rapid relief i didn't feel any more sensitivity than normal so that really really helped me out but yeah your teeth do get really sensitive when you are whitening something to do with the pores opening to whiten something like that i don't really know the technicality or the science behind it but yeah your teeth definitely do get more sensitive when you whiten them between the talky bit at the beginning my little journey up to invisalign and the q a i feel like i pretty much covered anything if there's any questions you guys want to ask me that are like specific to me I say that because it's probably going to be quicker for you to google more general questions i will absolutely try and get back to you guys as as quickly as i can i'll probably try and respond to the comments as they come in i can't promise but within the first 24 hours i will try and respond to most of them if it's more general questions like what is gum lasering or wanting to know a bit more about gum lasering or the technicality google is probably your best friend in terms of that anything to do with me of course fire away ask as many questions as you feel comfortable as you want to and i will try and answer them thank you guys so much for watching i really hope this video was informative i hope it was concise i hope it was helpful i hope it helped in your process of deciding whether or not you want to go through with it as i said one of the best investments i've made is definitely my teeth everyone will differ i hold oral hygiene to a high place so for me my teeth have been so good even like just looking at how my face looks i just love it like i'm so glad i did it don't forget to like share comment and subscribe share it with a friend share it with your cousin share it with someone that you feel like would find this useful hit me with any comments down below let's get a dialogue going for things that i may have missed out i'll see you guys next time bye